Hello, and welcome to Transformation by Truth podcast, where the call become the chosen and those who have been dedicated to serve the Most High receive the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as we progress our quest for holiness, perfection, and everlasting life. My name is D.L. Anderson. I'll be your tour guide. Let's get started with today's lesson. Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transmission by Truth podcast and the quest for holiness, perfection, and everlasting life week eight. Today, we continue with the sin series, two weeks to examine the greatest issue known to man. The week two objectives are understand the process by which we commit sin, examine the composition of man, reveal how we can end the process by which we commit sin, analyze the danger of sin in the life of a believer, and discuss the difference between having sin and committing sin. Today's podcast is Lecture E, A Word of Truth Accounting of Sin, The Greatest Issue Known to Man, Day 6. The title of today's podcast is, Why Did I Do That? Part 1. The good that I wish to do, I do not do. But the evil I do not wish to do, this I do. Romans 7, 19. The lecture E objectives are, analyze the composition of man, prove that all sin is committed within the soul, examine the eternal conflict between the flesh and the soul, and analyze the constant threat our flesh poses in our battles with sin. For those in our virtual book club, this lecture references chapter five of the Pinnacle of Holiness, volume one, the composition of mankind. Our first section is entitled, The Composition of Man. Today's podcast marks the beginning of our first three-part lecture and one of the most crucial series of lessons you will learn in this quest. And no wonder, but we have already proven sin is the greatest enemy you will ever face. Therefore, understanding and breaking the process by which we commit sin must have unlimited value. This matter lends itself to the title of the three-part lecture, Why Did I Do That? I am very sure we have all asked ourselves that question more times than we like to admit. But it's true. We all do things that we don't really want to do. And sometimes we do things we never thought we would do. The reason behind this great mystery is sure. We only know ourselves in part. Trust me, men and women are some of the most conflict beings ever created by Elohim. Consider all the good man has and could accomplish, and you will find it true. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. However, you will struggle to reach your full potential spiritually and or physically if you do not understand what you are made of. The same rule applies to the process by which we commit sin. My dear friends, you will never even have a chance of overcoming sin in your life if you do not understand the parts of you that are involved in this process. In essence, you must understand what you are made of, that is, your composition, your parts. Here's a question. How many parts are there in man's composition? And here's a hint. It's a perfection number. The answer is three. There are three primary parts that make up all women and men. 
These are your flesh, your soul, and your spirit. Now, the flesh is our physical nature. It originates from the earth, and when the body expires, it will return to the earth and never rise again. See Genesis 3.19. The soul is our invisible nature. It originates from the breath of Elohim, and upon the death of the body, it will return to Elohim. See Ecclesiastes 12.7. And the spirit is the primary driver of our nature. It represents our likeness to our creator and the division his spirit must fill for us to be saved. See Genesis 1.26. Our next section is entitled, Who Did It? Here's a question. Which part of you is responsible for sin? The flesh, the spirit, or the soul? The answer is the soul. When you commit sin, it is your soul who is committing the sin. Ezekiel 18, 4 and 20 reads, See, all souls are mine. The soul of the father, as well as the soul of the son, is mine. The soul that is sinning shall die. The soul who sins shall die. The righteousness of the righteous is upon himself, and the wrongness of the wrong is upon himself. Now, although the soul is responsible for sin, it is heavily influenced by our flesh and our spirit. In essence, the soul does not sin on its own. The flesh and the spirit are accomplices. What is more, the flesh and the spirit are the primary instigators. They incite sin in the body while the soul is left holding the bag. Alas, this is one of the more tragic scenes of life. For the soul is, in its origin, innocent, just like the newborn who has received it. It is a blank slate, untainted, undefiled, pure and perfect in the eyes of Elohim. Fast forward 10 years, and that soul is no longer innocent. Fast forward 10 more years, and that soul is even worse off than before. The question of the hour is why? Allow me to answer with an interest point. Without the set apart spirit of Elohim, you do not have the power to keep your flesh in check. Therefore, your flesh will be free to follow a wide array of carnal pursuits, and the only true restrictions it will encounter are within the boundaries of man's laws. Likewise, your spirit, without the set-apart spirit of Elohim, cannot withstand all the evil forces and anti mashiach spirits in the world that persistently tempt men and women to operate within the realm of lawlessness. Even if these anti messiaic spirits cannot force you into criminal and or antisocial behavior, they will be content as long as you are not in the way of holiness, especially if they can deceive you into adopting their counterfeit version of goodness and following query to self-righteousness. Our next section is entitled, An Inside Job. These things being what they are, you should clearly see how the soul is hopeless to sin. Herein lies the tragedy, for neither the flesh nor the spirit of man are willing or able to assist the soul in any real battle with sin. As a matter of fact, the flesh is a defector when it comes to sin. The perfect model of a reprobate and a deserter, the flesh will always side with sin because it desires no restrictions. And sin via lawlessness is the epitome of no restrictions. This is why your flesh is one of the seven greatest enemies you will face in your quest for holiness. And for your review, 
Here are those seven greatest enemies, your sinful nature, yourself, your flesh, the kingdom of darkness, the eternal force of evil, your ego, and death. Seeing as your flesh is an ally of sin via lawlessness, every occasion of sin in your life is, in fact, an inside job. Your soul may not desire to sin, but as long as your flesh is a detractor, you are never going to defeat sin. You may not be a stone-cold killer, but you will be a habitual sinner and on a path that leads to endless death. Let us hear the conclusion of this matter. Let us hear what the word of truth has to say about our flesh and the role it plays in the commission of sin. Romans 7, 18-19 reads, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good, for to wish is present with me, but to work the good I do not find. For the good that I wish to do, I do not do. But the evil I do not wish to do, this I do. And if I do that I which do not wish to do, it is no longer I who work it, but the sin dwelling in me. I find therefore this law, that when I wish to do the good, that the evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Elohim according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, i.e. my flesh, battling against the law of my mind, which is my soul, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, i.e. my flesh. Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Thanks to Elohim, the Yahushua Messiah, our master. So then, with the mind, I myself truly serve the law of Elohim, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Let's now discuss the great enemy of the body. No doubt, there is a lot to unpack here. And the sum of it proves the flesh is the great enemy of the body. This is because the flesh is an actual fact in service to the law of sin, giving sin a decided advantage in its war against the soul. Therefore, if you are to succeed in overcoming sin, you will have to defeat the alliance your flesh has with sin. This, no doubt, is something I'm going to show you how to do in future lectures. Yet, for the purpose of understanding how we commit sin, the primary objective is to appreciate the role your flesh plays in the process. Likewise, you must appreciate how every sin you commit is an inside job. You, my friend, are compromised within, and until you do something about it, you will never make any real progress in your war against sin. As you would expect, the damage and defilement of sin does not stop with the reckless actions of the flesh. Remember, every sin we commit is committed within the soul. Therefore, to progress our understanding of how we commit sin, we must analyze what happens in the soul after our flesh sells us out to sin. And this will be the focus of tomorrow's podcast. Now, here is the final word. The hardest battles you will ever fight are the battles you fight within. Our introduction to the process by which we commit sin has uncovered an obvious threat to our eternal salvation. Enter the flesh, the great enemy of the body and the greatest defector of all time. Therefore, I trust you appreciate the flesh for the clear and present danger it is and will always be, as long as you continue on the earth. Your flesh is not in it to win it. 
your flesh is not a team player. Quite the contrary. Your flesh is only in it for himself, and he will send your soul to hell to indulge himself in temporary pleasures. The only question is, are you going to let him do it? If you answer no, that's good, because I'm going to show you how to defeat your flesh the same way I am showing you how to defeat sin. So stay with me, for here again, these are only two of the seven greatest enemies you will face on your quest for holiness. Now, here is the assignment for today. Spend as much time as you can meditating on today's podcast. And be ready tomorrow as we continue this powerful three-part lecture. And here is what's next in this series. We can complete today's podcast, Why Did I Do That? Part one. Tomorrow's podcast is Why Did I Do That? Part two. Now, if you are a member and have questions, please click the Q&A box underneath the video player. Likewise, if you have comments you want to share with the group, please share those in the comment box located beneath the Q&A box. Now, if you're not a member and you have questions about today's podcast, feel free to contact us via our website at www.pinnacleofholiness.com and use the form on our contact page and we will respond to you as soon as we can. And thank you for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Remember to tune in with us every Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And if you haven't already, visit us at www.pinnacleofholiness.com and make sure you sign up to join the Quest for Holiness, Perfection, and Everlasting Life 2022.